Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, go ahead and check out the Potown store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using that code OmniPoke. For today's video, we are looking at another VMAX from the Darkness of Blaze set. This time it's going to be Salamence VMAX. Certainly an interesting card, obviously it's a colourless attacker, so there's plenty of ways we can try and build around him. Today I'm going to be looking at a sort of straight build using Triple Acceleration and Giant Bomb to help us with some extra damage. Let's jump into the basic concepts, and I think a lot of people agree that Salamence is a really interesting attacker. Those early game snipes can be very helpful at putting some tag teams in range of knockouts later down the line. Um, as well as be able to punish some early game, maybe evolving basics, or even just the likes of Zigzagoons and Jirachis from our opponents, which are still relatively present in the format. If we're doing those 40 damage snipes, you can set them up uh, for knockouts later, or you can just use your own Zigzagoons and scoop up nets to take those additional prizes, similar to how we saw Dragapult in the previous format do uh, that all the time, really. Uh, and you also have a bit more of a finishing uh, blow sort of attacker where you have 240 damage at your disposal so you can get through regular V Pokemon quite easily um, and you can also push on old tag teams quite a lot with those early damage pokes and uh, yeah like I said Giant Bomb helps our damage output here as well and I'll uh, talk about that in a moment. Also trying out the Piers engine in here, um, Piers gives us good access to three CEs so we're not just relying on drawing one of our four copies. Uh, you can scout it out of the deck with Piers quite happily. At the same time, you're grabbing some nice synergistic cards, Galarian Zigzagoon, as well as Crobats for sort of, sort of getting more damage into play or just getting yourself more draw in general. So a small Piers engine, but still an extra help towards finding these triple accelerations for the crucial turns where you're going for those max wing attacks. Into the Pokemon now, we are playing that 4-4 line of the VMAX. I'm pretty certain now that we saw the benchmark for um, Rebel Clash where Dragapult just wanted to play maximum copies of these for the most part um, that I'm going to follow suit with almost every VMAX in future because it's just so detrimental uh, to whiff that you want to max out copies of this. I think especially the case in this list because we don't have the same acceleration of Welder or Porygon that some of these other Salamence builds have so we really can't use the V for much although it has some decent attacks in Transflight and Heavy Storm they're a little bit niche and we don't have the same sort of acceleration in this list specifically to take advantage of them. So we're really just using the regular V as a launch pad to get into the main attacker, which is the VMAX. 320 hit points Pokemon with that twin Sonic attack doing 240 damage pops wherever you want. Uh, it can be active and bench if you want to. So very nice, like I said, setting things up uh, for knockouts, getting them in range for you or just um, even setting them up for knockouts with some of your other one prizes like Hoopa later down the line. This sort of stuff can all be relevant. Or just putting damage on things like Jirachis, knowing that you can Zigzagoon scoop up net and polish them off later, which is very cool. That max wing attack, like I said, is very dangerous. 240 is a really solid number. Uh, I think also with Giant Bomb, you can just see quite obviously that that number is going to be great. Uh, putting a Giant Bomb on this guy, hitting something for 240 like an Eternatus, it's going to be uh, perfect numbers. And that's the same for pretty much every VMAX as well. So yeah, these Giant Bombs are going to be a really critical tech card for the VMAX matchups. We have three copies of Stellowish, uh, Jirachi. Obviously it's a great lead for us in the game. And it's also going to help us pivot out and back into our Salamence if we want to. Because Max Wing has that small downside that you can't use it the following turn. So if we are just trying to smash with the Salamence, uh, you can just go back into your Jirachi and maybe scoop up net once again. Uh, so we already want to have a relatively high switch count in this list for the synergy with Salamence and with Raichu Raichu to a small extent as well. Um, so Jirachi being a pivot is always nice. It can work us towards finding energy in the opening turns through Viridian Forest. It can get us early ball search, all that good stuff. We're playing one copy of a Rangaroo. Primate Wisdom is very nice for protecting triple acceleration energies so we don't research those away. Uh, it's also pretty decent at uh, having that synergy with Mind Report Mewtwo as well. Even if you're not protecting 3C, you can protect, you know, your Coco Prism, you can protect Salamence VMAX, you can protect all sorts of things on the other side of a research, which is always pretty good, even uh, supporters in certain situations. Um, we do have that Mind Report Mewtwo. We're playing uh, four or five different supporters in this list. Um, so it's pretty nice synergy here. You can reuse Malolanas, bosses. Uh, we're playing uh, just one Marnie in here. So trying to give yourself more access to that where disruption is going to be important uh, is going to be a nice uh, option for sure. But I do bear in mind that most of the time you want to commit uh, scoop up nets to your Zigzagoons and to your Jirachis. So 
Mewtwo is more of a bit part player, but it certainly can uh, pull its weight, especially towards that late game. Coco Prism and Raichu Raichu are an interesting kind of mini package going on in here as well. Dance of the Ancients helps us out against uh, hammers and just make sure that we can burst a Salamence out of nowhere if need be, uh, because you can just dance onto a Salamence and attach a 3C for turn and suddenly you're using Max Wing, so it gives you a sort of bailout option if you missed early game attachments, which is pretty cool. And also having the Raichu Raichu just makes a lot of sense because at the moment we don't really have any answer to Zamazenta and that seems to be a more relevant card as we move into this format with Eternatus being uh, one of the top dogs. Uh, so Raichu Raichu being an option here seems very cool. Uh, I also really like this card specifically as the attacker of choice, even though you can't knock out a Zamazenta in one hit. You do have 260 base as well as that uh, 20 resist from Metal, uh, so you can actually tank Zacian hits. So if you're up against specifically ADP Zacian, the Raichu Raichu is likely to stick around for a turn, which is uh, actually really important, so that if you are doing things like Tandem Shock plays, or even Lightning Raid plays, hopefully it's not easy to pick off this Raichu Raichu, because we probably will have to get through a Zamazenta at some point. We then have the five Pokemon uh, that are all Dark types to fit this sort of uh, Piers package. The Hoopa's a really nice one, Evil Admonition doing 20 more damage for each of your opponent's abilities, as well as that 10 base for just the one colorless. Again, suits the deck down to the ground. You can definitely punish Eternatus players because they play a bunch of Crobats and Zigzagoons, and even Eternatus VMAX has an ability. Um, so if you are doing some Twin Sonic plays and putting Crobats in range, Hooper can quite easily polish those up for some uptrades, which is nice on certain turns. Also, this is one of our key attackers against Decidueye. Really, it's only Oranguru and Hooper that we're going to try and use here alongside uh, Zigzagoons uh, to try and deal with this guy. Uh, but do bear in mind, Salamence is also really good if they're going to get too erratic with their benching of stuff. Twin Sonic can punish, you know, Rowlets, Jirachis, all that sort of stuff quite easily. So I'm hoping that with Quad Scoop Up Net, this one energy attacking Hooper, uh, Malolana, Mind Report, hopefully these two attackers can see us through especially because Salamence is so good at keeping the rest of the bench in check for the most part. So that's really the hope. I can see Decidueye being a little bit awkward though. So if you want to add in a second Hooper, for example, or even like Zapdos, a few other uh, one prize attackers, that could certainly be a thing. The double zigzag, very nice in here to make the most out of Twin Sonic. And we also have the Crobat V uh, to give ourselves some extra draw from the peers, uh, as well as just, you know, in the early turns, Knight's asset is never a bad idea because we are still playing a stage one deck for the most part. Uh, in these early turns. For trainers, again, very simple. We've got the four scoop net and the three switch um, to help move between our Salamance, move between our Jirachis, and also make the most out of those Zigzagoons so we can take those prizes easily with, on like Jirachis and stuff. We're maxing out the ball search of Quick and Com. I'm basically doing this with all of my uh, VMAX decks. We are playing those three giant bombs. I've praised them a lot. Uh, they are really, really solid cards in this list. Like I said, against VMAX decks, um, Although Center Scorch and Eternatus can, you know, technically play around the damage of Giant Bomb if they want to, we can punish that with Malolana, like, very easily, so that's got to be on their mind. If they are going to gust around Salamence VMAX, that's also a small benefit to us, because we are resetting our own Max Wing if we used it the previous turn. Uh, so, yeah, Giant Bomb is a nice deterrent, and making them hit other things around the board potentially skew their prize trade at times as well. Um, but if they are hitting into this giant bomb, it's going to be very good against the other VMAX decks for certain because that 240 can come in and swing and uh, finish things off, which is excellent. Even against things like Baby Blounds, this giant bomb could be very useful. Uh, we've seen that in how Dragapult used to play the matchup uh, when it had bombs in here. You can do the same thing. You can just let Zigzagoons polish off something that's just taken the giant bomb hit. Uh, or you could do uh, Twin Flight again, or Twin Sonic hitters, um, and start also putting pressure on their Jirachis and their other basics in the game. So yeah, that's really, really awesome as well. Playing a couple copies of Viridian so that we can A, contest the Stadium War in general, uh, but also we want to have some extra discard synergy for our Lightning Energies so we can pop off of Coco early. And of course, just having additional outs in the early turns off of Stellar Wish to hit some energy drops is always a good thing. For supporters, like I said, with that Mind Report, I'm a little bit more flexible to playing a variety of supporters. We're playing one Malolana. Again, it synergizes with Bomb quite nicely. If they're going to just sort of prod you and not do enough damage to pop a, a Bomb, you can Malolana and remove that damage. So just knowing that that's an option makes your opponent play differently, which is very cool. 
Uh, it's an additional switch out as well if you really need to, so that's something to bear in mind. We're playing one copy of Marnie, like I said, we're really trying to main research and peers for the most part. Those are the sort of main consistency cards in here, but Marnie still can play a big role in disrupting the opponent and just having that option seems decent. Boss's orders for picking off things that either we can't, you know, snipe to finish off. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind. And uh, we've got the two copies of Piers, which I think is a really nice package in here. It feels like a really good sweet spot where you're giving yourself extra outs to triple acceleration when you need to, which is very cool. You're getting yourself early access to Zigzagoons, which is exactly what you want when you're trying to pressurize basics before they evolve. Uh, getting yourself more Crobats early on for draw. All good things around this Piers. I, I do think quite highly of him in this list. And then we have four copies of Professor's Research. Still, at the end of the day, the biggest uh, dump and draw option that we have here. We already play a Ranguru to try and make the most of Research and not feel too punished by her. For the energies, we're playing uh, four copies of 3CE, uh, obviously a big part of the deck so that we can use those max wings, and six copies of Lightning Energy. I'm hoping this is enough to have like a Hooper army against Decidueyes, trying to load up a Raichu Raichu against uh, Zamazentas, and obviously see a decent amount early so we can start um, Viridian foresting them to the bin and thinning the deck out even more, so that's kind of the plan there with the, uh, the six Lightning overall. So here is the full list, uh, take a screenshot now if you want, it will always be in the description as well if you want. For tech options, there's of course the other directions of Salamance in the first place. If you want to try the Porygon Z build, that's where I first started. Um, you could definitely take advantage of a few additional special energy cards, which I think is very cool. Powerful Colorless is definitely a strong card, so there's no doubt about that. And you can think about weaving in either Powerful Colorless or Capture into this list as well. It just makes the effectiveness of Coco and Raichu a little bit less. Um, so it really depends on how scared of Zama's enters you are. If you want to weave in powerful colorless or captures, they can be decent. Um, also recycle is very good for the Porygon Z. It lets you like retreat around your board quite freely and stuff. So that's also very cool. Also playing recycles lets you hyper potion. The main reason I kind of went off the Porygon Z build is A, you whiff and it feels really slow. Um, and B, like you're just so susceptible to Marnie. You're already focused on finding your stage one, like trying to add in hitting candy stage two on top of that, whilst also playing greedier cards like Hyper Potion just feels like way too much after testing it. Uh, nothing really pans out the way you want to for the most part. The Welder build I also think has potential. I think that it's more likely that Center Scorch will end up being the best VMAX to use Welder. Um, but it does cover a lot of Salamance's weaknesses in that you gain things like Volcanion and Victini V to get over some Zamazentas. You gain a couple other additional nice attackers here as well, so they could be reasonable for sure. And then just in terms of this list, there's a few other cards that I've thought about having in here and toyed around with. Capture Energy, again, similar to the Powerful Colorless, if you just want to have these in low counts, it can be decent extra consistency. Spike Muff can ease the pressure of your Zigzagoon pings quite a bit and punish those Jirachi plays. I think if I was playing Spike Muff, I'd want to combine it with Mr. Mime, uh, because then you're shutting off Scoop Up Net as an out. Um, so if you want to commit spaces towards the Spike Muff and Mr. Mime package, you could definitely think about doing that, because you're forcing those Jirachis then and a few other things to um, use those switches, and you can capitalize on it with Spike Muff. My main issue is, A, we're playing our own Jirachi package, so a few other decks could potentially take advantage of that on our end, or we could limit ourselves in how many Jirachis we can actually play in the game, or uh, how many Stellar Wishes we can get. Uh, also, we want to reset our own Salamance at times, and putting our Salamance down in hit points also has a minor anti-synergy there as well, so something you have to be a little bit careful of, but it, it can cash in on the, uh, on the Twin Sonic attack quite nicely. For the matchup overview, we do have weakness to the Vika Volt V as well as Picarom. Now, I think Picarom gets way worse, obviously, post rotation, but it still will have, you know, the Choo Choo of its own and Boltons that can hit you for weakness, which is a worry. Luke Metalization, thanks to their Zama Zenters, more than likely are going to be a very difficult matchup, especially because they have energy removal. The Raichu Raichu isn't like the saving grace in the matchup, it's really all we have to try and deal with it. Uh, but if we just potentially attack with our Raichu Raichu, and then they just go into like a Luke Metal, for example, uh, that's going to be a big issue. So we can probably only get through one Zamazenta uh, in both the ADP and the Luke Metal matchups, but I feel Luke Metal will be more difficult because they're adding in energy disruption, and other than our Coco popping, we can only manually attach to the Raichu every single turn, so that's not too ideal. I also think the Decidueye matchup is going to be tricky. Now, I have said a few things we can do. We can pressurize the basics and the Jirachis with our own 
uh, twin sonic attack and we can try and use that Hooper with a bunch of scoop up nets and a bunch of uh, Malolana spam as well if possible. Um, so it's not like we're going to completely just lose to the Decidueye but I can see it being a little bit too much for us especially if they play like a defensive core with uh, big charms and that sort of stuff and if they can maintain their bench and remain uh, you know in con uh, if they can remain in the game without having to use Jirachis and stuff it's going to be quite awkward to get through an army of Decidueye to be fair. For my closing thoughts like I said feel free to explore the Welder and Porygon Z lists. Uh, I do think there is merit to both of those, but I've sort of outlined why I'm kind of against them and why I'm relatively happy playing the straight build. I do think that this list will struggle more than the other two against Samazenta because you don't really have many inbuilt answers and I've had to sort of shoehorn the Coco and the Raichu in here just to have an out and even then it doesn't feel like the best out out there. So um, yeah, let me know if you can think of any better Zamazenta answers uh, down below. I'm all ears. Uh, for a build like this but one thing that I do know is that a giant bomb is just a brilliant with Salamance it's a great way to make up for its kind of middle of the road number in 240 yes it's very good against the regular V's yes it's good at dealing with like a Crobat uh, gusting them up and stuff uh, but it's not ideal against uh, the V maxes unless you have that giant bomb in there it can really make your opponent play quite differently um, so working around with Giant Bomb seems very cool. I actually think Giant Bomb could be becoming a stronger card as we move into this format because Eternatus' damage output is just absolutely nutty at times and trying to keep up with them may need the help of a tool like this. So let me know what you guys think of the straight Salamance Giant Bomb list using the Piers engine and a mini Raichu package. It's very wacky for certain, um, but I think this really just shows the versatility of Salamance. We can really try all sorts of synergies here and see which one works best. Let me know if you've tried anything else. Have you enjoyed the Welder list? Have you enjoyed the Porygon Z build? I'll hear it all down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in another post-rotation Darkness Ablaze deck tomorrow. Cheers.